Yo, what is good, Dev guys? It's your boy Kane. Uh, this is a quick little video, man. I've been spending, I want to say, what time is it now? It's 4.20 my time. Hey, shut up. Hey, don't say that. Hey, it's 4.20 my time right now when I'm recording this video. And um, I've been spending about four and a half hours trying to figure out this system. And what system I'm talking about is basically uh, getting my enhanced input to work properly with uh, gas or gameplay ability systems. As you can see, if I go into my input here, I have no input mappings assigned and I'm using the in enhanced player input and enhanced input component. If I go here, I can uh, spawn in here. You see all of these actions, this aim down sight, this, this fire, this crouch, this sprint, the dash and the jump. All of these are governed by gas. Everything is uh, like pushed through gas. So how am I using enhanced input? And this is something that I spent five hours figuring out. Uh, I had a good article to help me get to a good point and also jumped into the forums and seen other people's solutions and what they're doing to help me get to the point. But there's no video out there on how to get there and the, the reasoning behind it. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my character here and I'm just going to find my function that says add character abilities, right? So in this function here, we make sure that we're the server because we only wanna give abilities on the server. And then for each of the abilities that we set in our custom uh, tier array here, uh, for each of those abilities, we want to give that ability to our ability system component. And this F gameplay ability spec, this basically is a struct that uh, it will save the data, the data of the ability, the type of class the ability is, the abilities level, and uh, the, the input ID. This is very important to why this system works uh, with how I have it set up and the source object. This is something that you would use in a in a ability where you would check to see if the source object is the one who gave you the ability and if that's the case then you would run the ability or you can also get the source object to whoever put the ability on you if the ability was like a, a debuff or something like that uh, but yeah this static cast to an n32 it basically casts a enum to a n32 value and it feeds it into this uh, in input ID parameter here. And this gameplay spec is, is basically this ability's um, key card through the server and the player. So with us setting up this uh, ability input ID, and this is a, a, a value that we have on our uh, startup ability. So if I go to, uh, let me just go to my ability here. My ability has this uh, ability input ID, and that's what this value is here. This startup ability dot get default object, and it gets that ability ID off of that default object. That's how we get that value. So of course, that value, um, this value is set in the editor, and I'll show that in a second. So we got our abilities. Uh, the server has given us our abilities and we've given it an ID to like say, hey, if this ID is used, this is the ability that's tied to that ID. So now how do we tie our input to that ID? And this is a, a, a different type of uh, process here. So let me go to my header file and let me just go down to my input here. Where is it? Uh... Here, okay, so you see I have all my input actions here and I, I'll probably put this in a component so that it's not crowding up my character class, but honestly, it's not bad. Um, but yeah, I have all my input actions here and up here I have all of the callbacks that those input actions will handle. And this is the tedious work. Uh, one other guy inside the forum was, was trying to tell me about a process where all you do is have your, uh, um, your input manage activating the abilities and 
not really binding it, but I, I didn't want to have to deal with refactoring my code that deep. Um, so I just went ahead and did it this way, but this function basically all it does, and this is the function that's bound bound to the, uh, input player component. I'll go down there and show you that real quick. Um, so the input player component, it'll say, we'll want to bind this action, whether it's the well weapon alternate action, we want to bind it to this function here. So whatever this function is, run this function whenever we, we press this action or whatever, we, whenever we press the key, that's uh, mapped to this action. So I'm going to go to this, just the alternate action. They all call the same logic here. And all this function does is call another function that sends input to our ability system component. And it takes in two parameters. It takes in whether the uh, input is pressed, which means it's held down or if it's released. Um, and it sends in the ID that we want to associate this uh, input action with or the input press with and this function all it does is checks and sees if we have a, a, a ability system component and if uh, the bool come through as true then we want to tell the ability system component that we are trying to locally press whatever ability ID we're passing in here so if I pass in the primary action I want to tell the ability system component, hey, I'm pressing the primary action. So whatever ability is bound to that primary action, activate it if it's available. Same thing if I don't, if uh, this comes in as false, I am now letting go of that action. So if there's a fun, if there's a task that says that we're waiting for the input to be released, uh, here you go. We've just released that input and I'm gonna get rid of these print streams. I don't need them anymore just for testing. But yeah, uh, I could explain this more if you guys need that type of help. Just hit me in the comments. But yeah, basically all this does is just say, hey, ability system component, we have some abilities that are already bound to these to these integers. Uh, here's a value. If there's an ability bound to that value, activate that ability. And let me show you guys just one of the abilities so you can see how it all connects. So if I go to my dev folder, gas, abilities, um, there's the weapons here and let's do this assault rifle. I know I got a lot of folders. Y'all know how I get down, baby. I love folders. Okay. Uh, let's just look at this primary, uh, uh, fire action here. And I got this all from the gas shooter. I did have to make some adjustments to, so that it fit better with my project. I will have to add some things as well because I will be doing more, um, fire modes. But you see here, my ability input ID is set to primary action. So if, if I pass in the input ID that this is bound to, which is primary action, this ability will activate and it'll do its thing. So yeah, let me go back in here and just make sure everything works properly. So I can, like I said, I, everything is bound to a specific, um, um, input action. And once that input action is pressed, all my, uh, all my ability system component has to do is say, okay, I'm passing in this value for you activate that ability. And I can switch weapons because that's also an ability. And I'm basically at the point where I was in my other project in UE4, where I was using, um, I was using uh, a able ability system, which is a good system, but in able, I had to do a lot more uh, groundwork when it came to abilities and stuff like that. So I just want to get on here real quick, man. I know this is a damn near 10 minute video. I just want to get on here real quick to put this video out there for people who are searching for this answer and it's not out there. You have to really like dig deep in forms and, and look for the answer. I want to make sure it's more visible. So, uh, if you guys found some help in this video, uh, go ahead, leave a like, subscribe to your boy, uh, uh, I don't even know if I'm going to edit this, to be honest with you. I might keep it how it is, baby, raw and uncut. Y'all can't even see my face because, uh, you know, uh, I wasn't expecting to get on camera today. I ain't cute and shit. But, uh, yeah, if y'all appreciate this video, man, leave a like, leave a subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I always appreciate that stuff. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.